In national news, in celebration of the occasion of the Manama being selected as the capital of Gulf tourism for 2024, the Eid Days activities launched by the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority during Eid al-Fitr contributed to diversifying the tourism product and enhancing the rich cultural scene of the kingdom. These events witnessed a large turnout from the public, including citizens, residents and tourists. The events including entertainment, artistic and cultural activities, in addition to exclusive hotel and travel packages and special offers. The Manama Evenings event will conclude tomorrow, recording a great interaction from its artistic performances and cultural activities. The event embodies the spirit of diversity and the rich heritage of the kingdom through its artistic and musical performances, cultural and entertainment activities, in addition to displaying a variety of traditional handicraft products, as well as various hospitality options. The joint control plan that was implemented by the various concerned authorities in Bahrain contributed to securing all requirements of Eid al-Fitr and controlling prices. More in this report. With the aim of controlling prices and ensuring the availability of goods and products, the joint control plan was activated before the advent of the holy month of Ramadan and extended to the days of Eid al-Fitr. This control plan included field visits and inspection campaigns to monitor sales markets to ensure that prices are not tampered with and that basic products flow smoothly in the markets. The control plan revealed the commitment of commercial establishments to activate offers and discounts as licensed and not to exploit the increasing demand for purchases to promote incorrect or misleading offers to customers, which was reflected positively in securing supplies for the holy month of Ramadan. The plan also intensified its visits and campaigns before the days of Eid al-Fitr to confront any attempt to exploit the seasons and occasions with illegal commercial practices by verifying the price display clearly, the absence of commercial fraud, and the smooth flow of goods. This resulted in a recovery in marketing and commercial activities during the period of Eid al-Fitr. The General Directorate of Exit Security at the Ministry of Interior has diligently put in place comprehensive plans to ensure the full readiness of Bahrain's land, sea and airports for the surge of visitors during the Eid al-Fitr holiday. The coordinated effort involves close collaboration with all entities operating at various ports with the primary objective of delivering the highest standard of services to travellers as well as guaranteeing smooth flow of movement, particularly through King Fahad Causeway which witnessed a significant increase in passenger traffic during the Eid holiday. The General Directorate of Exit Security maintains a constant, vigilant presence through its specialized directorate, which plays a crucial role in upholding Bahrain's security and safety as part of a comprehensive security framework aimed at safeguarding the nation. The second ministerial meeting of the strategic dialogue between the GCC and Central Asian countries will be held next Monday in Uzbekistan. On this occasion, GCC Secretary General Jassim al Budaiwi affirmed that the holding of this meeting comes based on the desire of both sides to develop their relations and their keenness to enhance strategic dialogue and their endeavor to build strong and close relations for the interest of both sides. He said that topics related to strengthening relations between the two sides will be discussed in addition to the latest regional and international developments. A large number of families in the capital government participated in the open celebration Your Joy is Our Aid for on the occasion of the Blessed Aid al-Fitr. The celebration included a number of entertainment events and competitions for children which contribute to strengthening ties between individuals and families and the value of the community spirit. This celebration witnessed several activities in addition to distributing aid gifts to all participating children.
We now turn to international news and Jordan's foreign minister, Ayman Safadi, received a phone call from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. And that's to discuss efforts to reach a ceasefire in Gaza and attempts to transport sufficient aid into the area, especially through Jordan. The parties stress the need to remove all obstacles to ensure the immediate entry of aid into the besieged Palestinian territory. Safadi stressed the importance of opening all crossings for the entry of aid and the need for supplies to address the humanitarian crisis caused by this war. He said Jordan would be able to send hundreds of trucks to Gaza daily as soon as the northern crossings were opened, allowing the UN and its agencies to receive and distribute the aid. Both officials focused on diplomatic efforts to reach an end to the crisis in Gaza to provide lasting peace and security for Palestinians and Israelis alike. The 45th Saudi relief plane operated by the aid agency KS Relief in coordination with the Ministry of Defense arrived in Egypt carrying food and shelter items to be transported to Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. The assistance is part of the kingdom's historic role of supporting Palestinian people in times of crisis. Meanwhile, waterborne diseases are spreading in Gaza due to a lack of clean water and rising temperatures. Since mid-October following the assault on Gaza by Israel, WHO has recorded more than 345,000 cases of tyria, including more than 105,000 in children under five years of age. The King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center's KS Relief's Massam project, which focuses on clearing Yemeni lands of mines and munitions, has successfully dismantled 383 mines from various areas during the first week of April. These included one anti-personnel mine, 75 anti-tank mines, 300 unexploded ordnance and seven explosive devices. The number of mines cleared since the beginning of that project has risen to 436,759, which had been randomly planted across Yemen, posing a threat to innocent victims, including children, women and the elderly. The U.S. military said it had destroyed an anti-ship ballistic missile launched from a Houthi-controlled area of Yemen. U.S. Central Command said in a written statement that no injuries or damage were reported to U.S. coalition or merchant vessels. Houthi rebels have launched dozens of missiles and drone attacks on shipping in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden since November, leading to retaliatory strikes by the U.S. against Houthi targets in Yemen. The rebels say their actions are in solidarity with Palestinians during Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza. French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz called for rebalancing trade relations between Europe and China ahead of the German leaders' visit to Beijing. Officials in Macron's office said that the European leaders discussed in a video call the impact of the war in Ukraine on European security. Scholz is heading to China at the end of this weekend for a sensitive three-day visit at a time when the West is tightening its rhetoric towards Beijing, whether regarding its trade practices or its proximity to Moscow. Macron and Scholz also emphasize in their call the need to boost European competitiveness. The UN refugee chief said Sudanese refugees could be making their way to Europe if humanitarian aid was not adequately provided to the people of the war-torn country. The UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, said the humanitarian crisis in Sudan could prompt desperate Sudanese to flee beyond neighboring countries, where nearly two million have already sought shelter. War erupted in Sudan on April 15th of 2023 between the Sudanese army and paramilitary rapid support forces, devastating the country's infrastructure, prompting warnings of famine and displacing millions of people inside and outside the country. Thousands of civilians have been killed, although death toll estimates are highly uncertain and both sides have been accused of committing war crimes. The World Health Organization said the crisis in Sudan could worsen in the coming months as the distribution of humanitarian aid and medical supplies remains restricted. The WHO spokesman said that time is running out and without a stop to the fighting, 
and unhindered access for the delivery of humanitarian aid, Sudan's crisis will dramatically worsen in the months to come and could impact the whole region. He said medical supplies in the country were estimated at about 25% of the need and 70 to 80% of Sudanese health facilities were not functioning due to the conflict. He said 15 million people were in need of urgent health assistance and that diseases such as cholera, malaria and dengue were spreading. Nearly 55 million people in Western and Central Africa will struggle to feed themselves in the June to August 2024 lean season, according to the March 2024 cadre organisé for food security. This figure represents a 4 million increase in the number of people who are food insecure compared to the November 2023 forecast and highlights a four-fold increase over the last five years. The situation is particularly worrying in conflict-affected northern Mali, where an estimated 2,600 people are likely to experience catastrophic hunger. Economic challenges such as currency devaluation, soaring inflation and trade barriers have worsened the food crisis affecting ordinary people in the region, with Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone and Mali being among the worst affected. The colors of folk art in the Saudi city of Najran brought joy and happiness to the people and visitors of the region during the days of Eid al-Fitr. Popular celebrations continued for three days in various neighborhoods and celebration sites in Najran where people welcomed the Eid days with traditional melodies that express love for the homeland and pride in its culture and social heritage.